To write the name of a binary covalent compound, first we write the name of the first nonmetal without changing its name. Then we write the name of the second nonmetal, changing the ending to "-ide", just like we did in an ionic compound. And then finally we add prefixes to show how many of each nonmetal are present, but we don't use the prefix mono on the first nonmetal. And even though I have this as a third step, once you get used to this, you'll start to just kind of roll that into the first and second steps, adding the prefixes. And so you'll see that here as we practice. So here is our first formula, N2O4. So I'm going to write the name of my first nonmetal without changing it, and that is nitrogen. And then I'll write the name of my second nonmetal, which is oxygen, but I'll change the ending to "-ide", so this becomes oxide. And now because this is binary covalent, I need to add prefixes. So for nitrogen, it's N2, and so I need to add the prefix di. So I have di-nitrogen, and then for oxygen, it's four, so I'll add the prefix tetra, and because it's oxygen, I actually leave off that A, and it just becomes tetroxide. So the name of this compound is dinitrogen tetroxide. So my next binary covalent compound is IF7. So I is iodine. So I'll write iodine without changing its name. And F is fluorine, but remember I changed the ending of that to ide, so fluorine becomes fluoride. And now I need my prefixes. Now because I only have one iodine, I actually do not use the prefix mono because I don't use mono on the first nonmetal. I can use it on the second one, but not on the first one. If I just write iodine, it means there's only one. Okay, so I won't use, I, I won't use mono on iodine, but I do have seven fluorides, so I will use the prefix hepta, making the name of this compound iodine heptafluoride. All right, so here we have P2S5, and I'll go ahead and start to just kind of roll in the process of using the prefixes to show you once you get started and once you get kind of used to this, you'll just start doing it right off the bat. So P2, so I have phosphorus, and it's P2, so that means I would need to use the prefix di. So I'll just go ahead and write that out all at once. So it's di phosphorus. And then I have S5, so that would be sulfur, and I would change it to sulfide, but I have five of them. So I will write penta sulfide. So the name of this compound is diphosphorus pentasulfide. So here I have PCl3, so P is phosphorus. I won't change the name, and I also won't use the prefix mono. I don't use the prefix mono on the first element. Okay, and then I have Cl3, so chlorine will become chloride. And there's three of them, so I'll use the prefix tri, so it'll be tri chloride. So the name of this compound is phosphorus trichloride. So here I have CO. So C is carbon. I won't change the name and I won't use the prefix mono because it's the first nonmetal in the compound. And then I have O, which is oxide. And there's only one of them. This is when I use the prefix mono. So it's not that I never use mono, it's just that I don't use it on the first nonmetal. So because I only have one oxygen, 
I use the prefix mono and this becomes carbon monoxide. So CO is the formula for carbon monoxide. So I hope this video has helped you understand how to name binary covalent compounds. Keep up the great work and I'll see you next time.